What is your favourite tree? Um, the sycamore tree. Because it's sick in it. Hey. <laughs> Australia is home to more things that could kill you than the maximum security wing of a prison. And it contains everything from birds that can kick a hole in your chest to snakes with a bite that can melt your dick off. Snake biting the dick, man. Don't, don't invoke that imagery. No, the thing, have you not heard about those snakes? Like, the snakes with bites in Australia that cause, like, almost instantaneous, like, necrosis of the flesh. So if they bit you on your dick, your dick would just melt and fall off. Carry on with the intro, please. Okay, no problem. Right, what does it say next? Oh, for fuck's sake. Stupid screen going blank. I own you, you piece of technology. You're mine. You belong to me. <laughs> do what I tell you. You do what I tell you. Oddly, despite all of this, one of the most dangerous things to call Australia its home is an unassuming looking tree with a stupid name. The Gimpy Gimpy, aka the Pain Bush. Describe for us, if any of us are ever in the situation, what the Gimpy looks like so we can avoid No, the it. Gimpy Gimpy. Gimpy Gimpy. Give it its full name. Yes, Put Gimpy Gimpy. some respect <laughs> on that fucking tree's name, Brad. Holy fuck, man. Do not mess with the Gimpy Gimpy. Actually, I don't think it's a tree. I think it's actually technically a bush, but it can grow to be a big bush. So I think, but would you call a big bush a tree? I don't know. Well, the tree experts, let us know. Is the gimpy gimpy? Oh, actually no, put a little fact bar below. Is it a tree or is it just a big ass bush slash shrub? There is a book in that uh, in the bookshelf near the room, actually, sorry, about uh, the types of tree. Would, would you like me to get it for you? Uh, I'm all right, thank a you. A tree encyclopedia. I'm kind of in the middle of recording something right now, but we'll do it afterwards, yeah? <laughs> My little put sister in, got put, me. Put it in the fact bar below <laughs> and then we'll move on, okay? Yeah. The gimpy oh, gimpy, okay, okay. it's fairly nondescript looking. And from a distance, you could easily mistake it for like, you know, a lesser, shittier tree. However, the unassuming look of the Gimpy Gimpy belies a terrifyingly effective defense mechanism. I love how when you're talking about a stinging bush, you just turn to fucking Edgar Allan Poe with your words. What? Belies upon the surface of this beastly creature. I'm just reading it out how I wrote it. <laughs> My words, just because I speak with this accent, don't mean I've done some university. I went to university, I mean, I did essays and shit. And shit, that's right, I said it. So what is the Gimpy Gimpy's defence mechanism? Thousands upon thousands of tiny silica hairs that coat basically the entire plant that contain a horrifically potent neurotoxin. And these tiny silica hairs have been likened to hypodermic needles in how sharp they are and the way they operate. Because if you lightly brush against, like, you know, the Gimpy Gimpy, um, these tiny silica hairs will get stuck in your skin, because obviously they're so tiny, so sharp, like a hypodermic syringe, snap off, at which point the neurotoxin within will begin to just like, you know, get released underneath the surface of your flesh. Causing a pain that I am not kidding people has been honestly likened to being set on fire and having acid spill on the affected area at the same time. It's like, this tree is no fucking joke. Like, even though its name sounds like one. What's the plant that we've got that um, when you brush against it, it puts the little needles in your skin, you have to pick them out? Nettles. Now, I don't, do nettles leave stuff in your skin? Yeah. Oh. That's how you can, pick up, you can pick up a nettle without stinging yourself because the pears all go one way. So if you like... Well, you can pick up a nettle by pinching it. Yeah. I used, there's a way that I was taught how to eat nettles. Yeah. So you can pinch it and rub it against your fingers to squeeze out the uh, stuff inside. Yeah, because like, the hairs on it are what pierce the skin and obviously through the hole in your skin that's yeah. where the poison goes in or the toxin think of the gimpy gimpy it's just nettles on steroids <laughs> best way to put it for the british people nettles on steroids there we go right although i wouldn't eat <laughs> right nettles although i would not eat fucking you know the gimpy gimpy, gimpy soup, soup. <laughs> one because i'd look at that on the menu and go maybe i'll just have a cheeseburger today but also if i knew what the, I'm like, i cannot be 100 percent sure they've got rid of all those hairs because i am not okay with eating something that's going to make me feel like there's acid on my tongue I don't want to feel like I've just like gone down on the alien queen. Fuck that. <laughs> There's an image for people. Didn't write that one. That's straight from the old <laughs> noggin. That's horrible. Would Ed, Ed Allan Poe come up with that shit? I think not. <laughs> Curiously, although the sting of the Gimpy Gimpy is often described as, and I quote, the worst pain imaginable, like a gentle summer's breeze, the sting of the Gimpy Gimpy neither leaves a mark or any lasting impression on the human body. Why is that? Because the hairs are so fine that they don't actually leave a scar. They just get embedded under the skin and just cause pain. So if you didn't know the plant was there, you wouldn't be able to tell? What do you mean? As in, no, as in you wouldn't be able to tell that, you, that that was what the problem was? You just have this pain and not be able to see it? Why? why well, I think why? if you lived in Australia or near a Gimpy Gimpy tree, <laughs> you'd know, because obviously I just said it's the worst pain imaginable. So if you suddenly brush against a tree and instantaneously feel like your arm is being gnawed off by, like, you know, Cerberus himself, like, you're gonna suspect maybe that was a gimpy gimpy, and I'm like, you know, I'm all kinds of fucked. Because we'll get to it in a moment, but there is no known cure to stop this pain. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the pain can last for months, 
if not years. And the reports from people saying like a decade after being stung by a gimpy gimpy, it still hurts when I get in the affected area when I get a hot shower. So not only are you gonna feel pain for years, you can't even enjoy a hot fucking shower after the fact. Because obviously they embed themselves under the skin and it's really difficult to get them out because they're so fine and there's so fucking many of them. I think one of the ways like a wax strip or to pour a diluted solution of hydrochloric acid onto the affected area. Neither of which are perfect solutions. All they do is really dull the pain. And like, if that wasn't bad enough as well, even if a gimpy gimpy tree is dead, you can still be stung by it because the silica hairs so are like basically glass needles are still there with the toxin inside. And the reports of like people in museums looking at um, like you no know, dead pressed versions of the leaf getting stung by it. So it can sting you after it's fucking dead like a century later. Yeah, last time we mentioned this, I was looking for, um, you know, there's videos of those people who get stung by scorpions and things. And yeah, all well, those looking, dickheads. Yeah, yeah, I was looking for one of those ones who, who intentionally got stung by the tree. And I don't think I'll be able to find the clip because it was from like a TV show that okay. I couldn't find a decent quality version of. But um, It's the one you told me about, isn't it? So the guy puts like a fingertip to the tree, immediately vomits, and then has to get like the aforementioned solution poured yeah, he's, onto he's, like, the effect He's like crouched down, clutching his hand like... <laughs> yeah, and we're going to get into that now because... Like, obviously, the worst pain imaginable is a very, like, um, ambiguous description of the pain. So let's get into that. So the pain's been likened to, it was fire and acid together. Yes, and described unironically as the worst possible pain imaginable. I think I remember it also being described as being electrocuted as well. Yeah, electrocuted while being on fire and acid spill. Because you know what, fuck you at that point. So is this one of those things that, like, you feel so much pain you just die? Like, in no, shock? oddly enough, because the plant doesn't actually contain enough of, like, the neurotoxin I mentioned to kill a healthy grown adult, which hasn't stopped it racking up a body count anyway. So how does it kill people without actually having the ability to kill people? Because it causes you to feel so much pain, you'll want to be dead. And there are confirmed reports of people who've been stung by this thing, killing themselves to escape the pain. And even if you somehow manage to, like, you, know, you know, man your way through that, there are people who've been stung by it, who've been known to give themselves heart attacks and then die because they were screaming so much and their heart just gave out. That's how painful this thing is. And as if all that wasn't baddy fuck enough, Brad, what are you doing in front of the camera? So I was checking the focus. I just okay. realised that... It's um... really distracting. Sorry, man. What's you want to adjust, adjust the focus live. There we go. <laughs> so I'm either getting blurrier or like closer to the camera right now. I think you were in focus. I just realised that and I now I'm out of focus. Check. Fantastic. Great. Thanks for really putting me off my stride that night. Sorry, man. It's going to be a great video, this one. Professionally unprofessional, that's what we say. We do, yeah, but I, I think even unprofessional people don't walk in front of the fucking camera. I'm technically not in front of it. I think, that's, I think it's fine. If it got more blurry, I apologise. Okay. So where was I? As if all that doesn't sound terrifying enough, people who've been stung by the gimpy gimpy usually have to be strapped down to a bed while you know, they, like, they get over the worst of the pain because people who've been stung might have been known to scratch their skin off in the affected area to try and stop the pain. Because it just like, it hurts and itches that fucking much. And it's at this point I'd like to point out some people have been stung in the face by this thing. Do you know like the thing like you walk through the brush and like, a, a, a tree branch slaps you in the face? That happens sometimes. And obviously it doesn't leave a mark. So you basically, your face looks fine, but not after you're done with it, after you scratch all your fucking skin off to try and get like, stop the pain. Because it's just a constant, unending burning sensation like an it like a quarter inch under your flesh forever basically or what feels like forever the original title of this article was about the butthole mm -hmm. and seeing as you just said people have been stung in the face has someone been stung in the butthole oh yeah there's a, a story from i think world war ii or like something in the earlier 20, uh, 20th century about um, like a commanding officer of like some military unit that were doing maneuvers in the Australian, like the jungles of Australia, I don't know what the fuck, where, where the Gimpy Gimpy lives. And like his men just found him later that day with a, a single bullet wound to the head that was self-inflicted. And so I said, why did he kill himself? Why, why are his trousers by his ankles? Oh no. And they, the reason, like, they reasoned that he'd gone to like, you know, into the, the brush to like, you know, answer the call of nature. He'd taken a shit and he'd reach for the nearest like, a handful of leaves to wipe his ass, and he'd accidentally picked up a bunch of gimpy gimpy leaves and wiped his ass all with it. And with everything I've just said, imagine the pain that man immediately felt, and his immediate reaction was to just shoot himself through the head, because he didn't want to live with that pain for, like, you know, at the very least, a couple more months. And I don't, you know what, I don't think anyone out there is going to blame that guy for doing that, because 
If someone said to me, like, Carl, could you survive with a constant burning, stinging, stabbing sensation in your asshole for four months? I'd go, no, shoot me right now. No, fuck that. And as well, like, the, thing, the Gimpy Gimpy hasn't just killed people because there are stories about, like horses and stuff falling into like the bush and then running off of like mountains. And obviously like, animals don't really possess like, you know, the mental faculties to like knowingly commit suicide. But the theory is that the Gimpy Gimpy just drives them so mad with pain that they just sprint like obviously in the mummy until they die and just run off the edge of cliffs. I don't want to go to Australia. Carl. I know I want to go to Australia, mate. Have you seen what lives in Australia? Have you seen like that video? You're not putting the video in. It's terrifying. Look, if you want to be scared of Australia forever, just Google spider catches rat. And it's a video of a giant ass spider that caught a fucking rat. And it drags it up the wall. And there's just some guy filming going, <laughs> yeah, that's a pass. It's like, what? This thing does not deserve to live. Get rid of it. You always see those videos of. Um... People in the like Australian households where one of the giant spiders has got in and they're trying to catch it and they accidentally knock it off and then everyone goes like yeah. mad. But the part that I'm always there, like sat there going is, how are you okay? Yeah. How are you okay walking up and putting a bucket on it? Yeah, like, I'll, I'll I'd, 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 like, that house is gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm selling that it house. It belongs to the spider. The spider can deal with the estate agents as far as I'm concerned. That house is gone. It's written off. It's a loss. It's done. But no, yeah, this thing exists and it lives in Australia and it's arguably one of the deadliest things that lives there because... It's so, like, honestly, like, people are scared of spiders. People are, like, are wary of snakes. People are worried about alligators and all that bullshit. Who the fuck is expecting to be killed by a bush, though? Hide in plain sight. That's, that's the motto of the Gimpy Gimpy. So seeing as it's the topic of today's conversation, mm -hmm. what would you say is the worst pain you've ever felt? Um, sorry, I had appendicitis once, and I think we talked about it in the previous video, but um, it's up there, it's my dog bite. It's people, like, it probably doesn't show up very well on video, it's a... Uh, a scar on my arm midway through the forearm. I was bit by a dog as a child, like straight to the bone. And obviously, you can imagine that fucking hurts. Obviously, the exposed nerve endings and all that stuff to the air. Because I was in the middle of like, I was like halfway, home, halfway between home and a friend's house. So I made the decision, like, you know, to walk to my friend's house. And the first thing is, like, his mum did because my friend wasn't in. So like, oh, I'll run under a tap for you. <laughs> Thinking obviously, I had to like scrape me out. I'm not realizing, no, it's a, there's exposed nerve endings there and ran it under the warm tap. And just imagine. It's exposed nerve endings, like it's getting simultaneously hit by what I would describe as warm water, and then immediately the cold, like cold tap as she ran it through. So that was pretty painful. Was um like in terms of the bite itself, with the outside wound, did it look like just a like a bite ridge it, as well, it was, or did it was they pull so, a chunk out? It was a big chunk, yeah. Yeah. So it was like blood just like everywhere. Oh, but she couldn't tell because obviously the blood and the like made it look like it was more just like a like a big yeah. dash. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was not great. I'll be honest with people. And the coolest part was though, when I was in like the doctor's office, like as I moved my hand, you could see like stuff moving underneath it, which was oh, really that's cool. That's weird. Yeah. I assume you had uh, anaesthetic by that point. No, no. no. They, just, they just put like iodine solution and stuff on it. It's fine. Hurts. Did you have to have surgery to repair the wound? No. Then? You can't. You can't. It's just there's nothing there to repair. It's just dead. <laughs> I but, don't know if they had to like move things around, sort of fix no, things back up. I was very young when it happened, and to my knowledge, they did nothing like that. They just wrapped it up and it healed over time. Yeah. And it smelt real fucking bad. As you can imagine, because it's like just they to, every week I have to go get clean. So I think anyone who hasn't yeah. seen, we did a video a while back where you briefly mentioned this, we're talking about playing guitar. Yeah, it affects your grip, doesn't it? Yeah, because the actual muscle there is um, not as strong as one of the arms. There's like there's no forearm muscle left. Yeah, Carl and I go climbing uh, once a week <laughs> usually, and uh, Carl really struggles with like it's uh, left arm holds that he yeah. has to spot his entire body because I know your grip. Like, you can hold yourself, but not your entire self. Yeah, pull-ups are really annoyingly hard. <laughs> also, so are, like, forearm exercises. It fucking wrecks. But no, I'd, I'd say that's probably the worst pain I've had. Because I've never broke... I've been lucky enough to never break a bone or anything like that. I think I've, like, dislocated a toe once and then just popped it back into place. But that's, like, it's instantaneous relief when that happens. Yeah. It's just a flood of blood goes in the endorphins. But no, that was just, like... Because it was just this agonising, just, like, burning pain in my arm while I was sat in A&E for, like, four and a half hours. Yeah. How about yourself? Well, uh, I've had I've never broken a bone either. Um, although uh, there's a chance I may have broken my foot once when I dropped a fridge freezer on it. There was a uh, this is it's really daft, right? There was this uh, like a front yard of a neighbour yeah. who was away for a few weeks, and my mum was getting rid of a fridge freezer. She just put it in that yard. We were friends with them, so she said it's fine. Yeah, and it was just there out of the way, so, and we were playing with it. So we like opened the doors and like closing it and hide inside it. You know, like you're not supposed to do. Yeah, and I obviously I was lift like levering it up from the bottom, and I was like 
I think I was in school. I was very young. And it's because it had been raining, it slipped out of my hands and landed straight on my foot. And my little sister who was playing with us burst out laughing. And I remember punching her in the chest really hard. <laughs> you before... punched your sister in the tip. <laughs> so I turned, up, uh, I turned up at home, crying my eyes out, limping with this really swollen foot. And then two minutes later, my sister walks in, clutching her chest. My mum's like, what happened? But you know, my, my worst ever one was, I'm not sure if it was indigestion or I think because I've got like mild RSI in my back from sitting on a desk like my entire career <laughs> um, what a loser <laughs> thanks well you sit on a set E with a laptop you're fine yeah I know but... all, all I've got to worry about is my nads getting irradiated <laughs> but I'm fine with that but yeah there was one particular night out when uh, I was in agonising pain from something in my back and chest yeah and I pretended I was fine and walked home and I remember getting halfway home and collapsing on the pavement or like clutching like a bollard, clutching my chest. And, and, and these drunk guys walked up and like made fun of me. <laughs> never change, Sheffield, never change. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that, that was mine. Like I got home and uh, managed to like soothe it after lying down for a while. And... Yeah, oh, that was good. Nice. Like, cue everyone in the comments corner's pussies. Like, you, you don't know what real pain is. There's someone like, my arm got cut off. Well, I get that with like, my tattoo and stuff like that. I always like, cause I said, it, it does hurt. It's a needle being dragged across your skin. And like, you know, especially with like black and stuff like that, they have to go over and over and over. It does tend to hurt after a while. Like, oh no, it doesn't. It's like, who are you fooling? Like, who are you trying to fool? Like, oh no, this doesn't hurt. It's like, don't try and just like, you know, man your way through this. It fucking hurts, but it's just an uncomfortable pain as opposed to one that makes you scream in agony. I liken it to like banging your foot against the table or like stubbing your toe. It's like, it's not something that's going to cripple you, but it's a pain you'd rather avoid. Like standing on a Lego. Yeah, something like that. It's not something that's going to like put you down for the count, but it still fucking hurts. And I always find it hilarious. So I see my friend's one who did it and she's a tattooist. She says, like, I always get like big burly men coming in trying to pretend it doesn't hurt. And they're always the ones who are like, they're going, ah, it's like, just, I had like a mother of three in earlier and she was fine. She was like reading a magazine while it was happening. So I think most of it's just like mental. What do you reckon is the worst common pain people get? Like an injury? Because oh, I'm going to say slamming your finger on a door. No. That's painful. No, it's um, stomach ache. Stomach ache. It's internal. Oh God, when you get like um, like the stomach flu, and yeah. you get that pain that goes from like the gut all the way yeah. down. Oh, it's that is gut bad. pain. Yeah. Anything in the gut, fuck it, no. Yeah. After having appendicitis, no, that I would not wish that on anybody. It is the worst, because you just doubled over, you can't do out. You can't, you can't stand up, you're delirious. Like you, you, every time you try and move or go to the toilet, it's just agonizing pain forever, and I thought that. 